So commodities are selling off a little as peace talks between Russia and Ukraine progress or don't progress. The speculative mania seems to be unwinding. Grains are down, oil is down. The daily swings of about $10 a barrel now seem to be almost normal. Precious metals, palladium especially, are down. And war or not, most commodities will rise again. There was an ongoing shortage before Vladimir Putin um, went all Napoleon, but excess must be purged. However, of note is that one industrial metal is hardly down at all, and that suggests that that particular bull market has a lot further to go. And that's why today we are talking about copper. Now, Russia is the world's seventh largest producer of copper. It produces about 4% of annual global supply. That's about 1 million tonnes a year. And it sells most of that copper to China and some into Europe. Iron, steel, manganese, they make up Ukraine's metallic production. It's not a big player on the copper stage. And so the overall consensus was that the war and that the sanctions on Russia wouldn't have as big an impact on the copper price as other commodities. And that has, mm, to a reasonable extent so far, proved the case. The main protagonists in the copper story lie far away in China, Africa, and the Americas. And I don't know how many times I've said this sentence, but I'm going to say it again, or at least a variation of it. China is the world's largest consumer of copper, and that's despite it also being the world's, not the world's largest, but the world's third largest producer. And it's a net importer, and it accounts for 54%, over half of world copper demand. Europe's the next biggest user at around 15%, followed by the Americas, um, the US especially, which account for about another 11 or 12 percent of demand. And total annual demand is somewhere between 25 and 28 million tonnes, depending on whose research you follow. And copper costs around $10,000 a tonne. So this is a $250 billion plus market, quarter of a trillion. Correct me if I've got my maths wrong, I'm sure you won't hesitate. And the country with the biggest reserves, by far and away, the biggest producer, is Chile. And fears of resource nationalisation there with its sort of newish left-leaning government have so far proved unfounded. And it produces 6 million tonnes, 28% of global supply. Next is its neighbour Peru, which is about 2,200 tonnes, 12% of global supply. Then China, 8%. Democratic Republic of Congo, similar, 7%. And then the US produces about 5% of global annual supply. And copper is used just about everywhere. Home building, construction, manufacturing, power generation, electronics and transportation. It's because it's used everywhere. Demand is often seen as a, as a barometer of economic health. And overall, demand is split roughly 65% electrical, 25% industrial and 10% transportation. And China's inventories are at their lowest level in four years since before the pandemic, as are the Letal London Metal Exchange, the LME inventories, as is visible global inventory generally, suggesting that there is strong support for current prices. Now, what does the copper chart tell us? Um, let's take a look. It had a huge run up in the bull market of the noughties. This is a 20 year chart. It collapsed in 2008, rallied to a peak in 2011 about $4.60 a pound. It then went through about nine years of bear market during which it lost more than 50%. It successfully retested its lows around $2 a pound in 2016, then in 2020, and then it went ballistic in the post-corona rebounding, reaching new highs in 2021, since when it's been consolidating around the new highs. Now we zoom in and we see three years of copper so that you can see the um, consolidation of the last year and it's been steadily creeping higher. The zoom up after 2020 and then the consolidation year. Now the Dominic Frisbee house call remains own copper. It wants to go higher. Never mind China, if we are to have our green revolution we're going to require a lot more copper. So how to invest? Now there's no shortage of ways to invest in copper depending on your risk appetite from futures to exchange traded funds to spread bets to 
stocks and shares. And you can even go down the scrap yard and buy the metal itself. That's what one of my brothers-in-law um, used to do, but he is mental. So I'll put a link in the comments and on the screen, but if you go to my Substack, I'll list out all the best ways uh, to invest in copper, including some suggestions of large cap companies. Um, if you want to make lots of money, small caps will give you more gearing. Um, there are plenty of small caps and mid caps around in the copper place to uh, spice up your dinner or give you indigestion, depending on how much you consume. And um, I might do a report on those actually, but Canada and Australia probably have the most listed small and mid caps, although there are plenty uh, in London on the AIM market as well. But just remember what Mark Twain said, a mine is a hole in the ground with a liar standing next to it, or, um, or words to that effect. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be back with another video very soon. Uh, in the meantime, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to my Substack and um, cheerio. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely evening. I'm down in the country and you can hear all the birds tweeting and it's uh, very pleasant. <laughs> uh, I'm not really thinking about copper mining, even though I'm talking about it, if that makes sense.